Hello once again, Wildcats. Welcome to another edition of Coach's Corner presented by Atrium Health. My name is Paul Roper, joined by Davidson Head Football Coach Scott Abel. As the Cats head into their home opener against the Barton Bulldogs this Saturday, they do come off of a loss against the VMI Cadets out in Lexington 12-7, but the Cats hunt in there with their scholarship program in there until the very end, ultimately came up short. What were your takeaways now that you've had some time to think about that uh, deficit? Yeah, you know, here we are really three days later, and I find myself... Uh, Still, yeah, still a little bitter about it, right? And, and how, how we finished and, uh, you know, but there, there's a lot of things that, that we need to look at. And four years ago, we sat here after we played our first scholarship program, Campbell, and lost a heartbreaker, right? And we're just all so excited to have the opportunity to win that game. Uh, this Monday, we sit here and we're all probably a little bitter taste in our mouth because we thought we should win that game. So we, we've come a long ways in what we expect and the growth of the program. And now we we just got to learn how to finish those. And uh, you know, my quick thoughts holistically, uh, we'll start defensively. I mean, I'm just so proud of our defense, right? I, I thought the effort was tremendous. Mm -hmm. They flew around, uh, um, really played at a level um, that excites everybody. I think uh, special teams, which I think for a lot of us were a concern going into the game, young, inexperienced in some areas. Uh, I really, really excited for how they performed, what they can give our program. And then offensively, uh, you know, um, it's certainly disappointed in, in how we executed, how we played. I put, I put that on myself. I, I told the guys afterwards, uh, you know, the, the offense is, is really the, the part of the, the specific schematics that I oversee, and, and they were a step ahead of us all day. And, uh, you know, our, our kids, I, I do believe, you know, we looked young at time, and we are, you know, we graduated you know, over 3,000 yards of offense last year, and uh, um, that showed up at times, the, the lack of experience against a scholarship program that had really prepared to, uh, for us, meaning they showed us multiple fronts, they stemmed, they stunted, you know, things that uh, we were really prepared for, but in the game when the real ammunition is flying around, you know, it's a little mm -hmm. harder to adjust. and. We found ourselves as a game going on probably getting a little too conservative because of that mm -hmm. with our play calling. And uh, then, you know, in the fourth quarter, I had a chance to win the game. And, uh, you know, it, it just didn't, it didn't happen for us. We needed to play better on third down in the fourth quarter. So that's a program thing. And I, I talked about that with our guys, you know, uh, had really played a really good second half, right? Did what we were supposed to do, three and out, forced a punt, drove the field, scored. And now it's a full quarter. With the rule changes, the game flies. Mm. And so, you know, we got the ball for the second time in the second half, and it was a full quarter with the lead. Now that changed the dynamics of how we coach, right? Mm. Uh, you know, it became more of a field position. I didn't think they could drive the field and, and, and win the game. Um, and our defense got tired. We had an injury late that hurt us, right, uh, to Dom. And uh, at the end of the day, they made one more play on third down than we made. And we just did not win the third down battle in the fourth quarter. And, you know, it's a shame, but I, I'm so proud of the fight. I'm proud of our effort. I thought both of those were tremendous. And if we can play with that kind of fight and that kind of effort, I know this offense is going to be extremely good. I know the talent here. Um, I'm, I'm proud of them. There's going to take some growth, and, and we're going to figure that out. And, but to see our defense best teams rise to the occasion, gives us all a lot of enthusiasm moving forward. And speaking of that defense, one of the players who saw a significant amount of snaps in Saturday's game was Saban McLaughlin getting the start at linebacker, tied for the team lead with eight tackles. What can you say about the performance that he had and the work he's put in to step up right out of the gates against VMI? Well, Saban's just been just a, a extremely high energy <laughs> effort guy since he walked on campus. High school running back slash receiver, didn't play much defense. Uh, we moved him to defense when he arrived here, and he really bought in and has now reaping the rewards for that. And he had a great Saturday, very athletic. He gives us uh, some, some great uh, skill out there because he played offense in high school that understands some of what, what comes along with you know, defending routes, right, seeing stuff really transform in front of you. Uh, had a great Saturday. Proud of him. I thought another player that had a great Saturday, and might I add, might have been snubbed for PFL Special Teams Player of the Week, is Tristan Allen, who had nine punts, flipped the field, had three punts of over 50 yards, three of them inside the 20. Quite a debut at that position for him. No, it really was, and I would agree with you. I think uh, 
He was snubbed for, for Player of the Week in the PFL. Had a great Saturday. Tristan's just an, a great young man who, you know, now is in his senior year. And, uh, you know, he, he, he's found his niche there in the kicking room for us mm -hmm. because last year, because of injuries, he was thrust into preparation, right? You may have to kick. You may have to punt. And so in the spring, mm -hmm. he really set his mindset, I'm going to win that job. And so he's won that job. What a great Saturday he had. I will say, I hope he never has to punt that many times again, right? <laughs> you know, uh, and, but if he's called upon, right, it gave us opportunity to win the football game. That game turned into a defensive battle in the field position game, and he was a big part of that. And, sp and speaking of Saturday, you mentioned it on Twitter or X or whatever Elon Musk wants to call it this <laughs> week. Uh, you uh, gave a lot of kudos to the fan base that showed up in Lexington. Now that you have more of a platform, uh, to describe your feelings about how they showed up, more than 280 characters or less, uh, your words and how the fan base responded to Saturday's performance in Lexington. Well, I loved our crowd there, right? I, I thought they gave us a great boost of energy uh, throughout the whole game. Um, it probably was a frustrating game. If you're a fan watching that game, you know, everybody wants to see offense. Uh, I think football coaches are fine, uh, no matter how the game uh, takes fold, as long as uh, they come up on the the winning side of it, which we didn't. But as a fan, you probably want to see more action. And uh, But it was a defensive battle, hard-nosed, old-school type of fight out there. And our fan base stayed into it, you know, whether it was defensive chance, cheering our guys on, being that energy behind us. And I thought it made a huge difference in the fourth quarter because when you play there, it is an advantage, right? You know, we don't always see that in our league where the home team necessarily has the advantage because of their crowd. VMI has that. Right, we knew that going into that um, game, and I thought our crowd—it's hard to equalize that. You're not going to equalize mm -hmm. the core, their band. But what they did do was give us that boost of energy at the very right moments when we needed it most. They never wavered behind us, and uh, I'm very grateful for them. Excited that now we're back home. I hope our crowd will come out and support us here, right, for our home opener against Barton. Well, that's the perfect segue because this is the 100th year at Richardson Stadium. In fact, it'll be its 100th birthday next October, uh, this October, I should say. But uh, one of four night games this year against Barton. Uh, talk about the, uh, the opportunity to play under the lights four times this season. I'm sure there's going to be some fired up fans at Richardson Stadium this year. Well, I, I think our night games are always uh, some of the best events <laughs> on, on this campus. We get tremendous crowd. Our student body loves our night games. Uh, you get a little more time to travel in here for our alums that are coming from distance. So uh, we're excited that it worked out to have four night ones this year. Barton, I, I will tell everybody, you know, you're going to see a, a really good football team Saturday. You know, we've had um, a Division II opponent uh, on our schedule um, every year. And I will tell you, this is probably the best uh, opponent at the Division II level we've played since I've been here. They're very well coached. Uh, they won a big game versus an, a rivalry opponent week one. They return a ton of players that are playing with a lot of confidence. So we need our fan base this week. Uh, we're going to need them behind us. This is, this is a big game for us, and we need, you know, need to be at our best, and we need our fan base behind us. Well, you touched on it a little bit. Barton winning a big game last week, 41-0 against Shawan. Uh, last year, came in here, Cats defeat him 37-17. to As you mentioned, returned a lot of players, including Jordan Terrell, who is gunning for 4,000 rushing yards in his career this week against Davidson. What can you tell us about the rest of this Bulldogs lineup? Well, I, I start with their preparation. I, I said this a second ago. I think they were very well coached mm -hmm. on both sides of the football. Uh, and then I, I think athletically, they're, you know, they're, they're very athletic. Right? They're, they're a team that would compete. Uh, in our league right now. You know, they're big up front. They have really good skill set. Um, and I, I think they have a, a dual threat quarterback and they use him that way in a dual threat system, but can hurt you with his arm and his feet. Defensively, right, they believe in what they do and they fly around. And so uh, they're a good football team. This will be another really good test for us as now we continue to prepare for PFL play. Join us for the final home over to Richardson Stadium. It's Hometown Heroes Night. If you're a healthcare worker, member of the military, a veteran, an EMT, you get free admission to Saturday's game against the Barton Bulldogs. Kickoff is at 7 p.m. If you can't make it to the game, listen in on the Pepsi pregame show start at 6.30 on the Davidson Sports Network from Learfield and the Varsity app. My name is Paul Roper. Thank you for joining us for this week's Coach's Corner presented by Atrium Health.